Today we are super excited because Acer has sent over their latest flagship Chromebook, the Acer Chromebook Spin 714. We had hands on with it earlier in the year. We are super excited that it is here. This is an awesome, awesome device and we cannot wait to get in the box and check it out. But before we get into that, this video is brought to you by Logitech, who we've partnered with for our biggest giveaway yet. We are giving one lucky educator or school faculty 30 Logitech Chrome Packs to outfit an entire classroom with the best tools to enhance students' Chromebook experiences. We know that the ever-growing and ever-evolving tech landscape can be overwhelming for educators these days, but Logitech has your back. These Chrome Packs include the ideal set of solutions to attach to your students' Chromebooks to help drive their success, all in an awesome kit approved backpack. This giveaway is open to all currently employed K-12 through school or district level faculty, IT staff, and leadership and ends July 31st. So if you're eligible, make sure to check the link in the description so that you can get entered to win. And again, a big shout out to Logitech for making this giveaway possible. All right, so as I said in the intro, this is a device that we actually had hands-on with back at Acer's global press event. They sent it to us. We had it for like a couple days, had to send it back. It was pre-production. We couldn't really talk about a whole lot of things, how it performed and all that kind of stuff. And to be honest, I sent it back and when they said they had this one ready, it wasn't supposed to be here till August. Uh, I was super excited to go back and watch that video and remind myself what the whole deal was with this. And so to kind of bring you up to speed, it is a 14 inch device, not the 13 inch device like normally the 713 the spin 713 is their big kind of flagship chromebook so they're going with a 16 by 10 14 inch device this year and this one's just a little nicer in all the ways that a chromebook can be nicer on the outside the build quality the keyboard and all that kind of stuff so we're super excited to get in here i think the one they sent us is yeah core i5 8 gigs of ram 256 gigs of nvme storage and this one's up for sale for $729, uh, at, and that's MSRP. That's what it's going to sell for. So when we start comparing that, this is a 12th gen Alder Lake Chromebook with a great screen and all that kind of stuff to something like the, I don't know, HP Dragonfly Elite Chromebook with the same specs, that Dragonfly is $1,500 or $1,400. This is like half the price and you're getting almost all of the cool stuff that's included in that HP. So I think, you know, Acer's put together something here that could be just wildly successful. And people have loved the, the 713 series for so long. And while you might ask, why did they go and change that, that whole thing up? They made the 513 and we've got a whole review on that. We'll link it in the description, but they, they made the 513 with the MediaTek Companion processor and it's nice and fast and it feels very much like the Spin 713. So it's like they kind of have that spot already set, you know, the three by two, 13.5 inch screen, all that's all in good shape. This is a different take on the flagship Chromebook. So as we open things up here, nothing out of the ordinary, uh, two piece charger, uh, cardboard box but as we always say none of this stuff's what you're here for you're here for the Chromebook and this one in the pictures at Best Buy uh, that's where it went up for sale originally um, that, that kind of prompted us to start asking about it again it's got this bluish tint to it um, I hope that's picking up on camera I'm not sure if it will it's so slight but it's such a good looking color uh, and I look back at our, our previous video and I don't, I don't feel like it looked that blue and this isn't super blue, but in certain lighting conditions, it, it, it should pick up that blue color, I would assume, uh, like maybe in the sunlight or something like that. But overall on the outside, you get this aluminum top, aluminum bottom. This isn't the thinnest device ever made, uh, but it's, it's plenty thin. It feels very portable. Um, I would say it's somewhere in the three pound range, uh, if maybe a little bit shy of that. But on the side here, you've got a uh, full size HDMI slot. Love to see that uh, USB type C here. Um, I want to say these should be Thunderbolt. At least one of them should be a Thunderbolt port. Um, it's hard to tell on here, but uh, if they're 4.0, they're Thunderbolt. Um, we'll figure out all this kind of stuff for the review, but uh, headphone microphone jack power button over here and on the other side volume rocker uh, full size uh, USB type a port here. Uh, it's blue. So it's at least uh, 3.0 probably 3.2 likely uh, another USB type C over here on the bottom. There's nothing say for the uh, fan ports here. This is 12th gen core i5. So it's got some fans going on and some little fan ports here on the back. But other than that, uh, pretty sleek design a little fingerprinting. It's already starting to pick up fingerprints as I'm kind of touching all over it here um, And that's about it for the outside. I will say there's a slight chamfer uh, right here to the edge 
yeah, it's 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 interesting. Uh, yeah, there's there's a definitely a chamfered edge on the back right here, but it doesn't go all the way around the edges, which kind of works on this because obviously your top and bottom aren't chamfered either. So it kind of just gives that back edge a cool a cool vibe back there, and the and the hinges are also creased here as well to kind of go along with that crease that goes across the back. It's it's a good looking Chromebook, and the boxier edges instead of kind of having that slope that Acer usually employs uh, is a nicer look. It's a little more boxy and. It just feels really good, very, very rigid in the hand, very high quality. All right, so let's actually crack this thing open. Let's see, I think I remember this is a one finger lift situation here, and it still is. Pretty sweet there. Um, I noticed right across the front here, get rid of that, right through here, instead of having just like the small little area in order to open it, like it had the full, there's like a full um, cutout right here. So you can basically lift this thing, I guess, anywhere. Um, yeah, technically it would work. Um, and I noticed as soon as I went to open it, there is a uh, cover for the camera. Again, we talked about all this stuff in our hands-on. It's like the hardware hasn't changed. It's probably just in a little bit better shape than it was uh, the first time around. So yeah, nice and rigid here. Um, you know, it holds up under, you know, check the corners here. Yeah, we're not getting a whole lot of bend when you hold it from the corner. And it just feels good. It's like there's no like... Uh, rough edges things come together really nicely and again it carries that same kind of bluish hue to the inside here uh, we have the speaker ports up top we'll we'll kind of give those a listen real quick backlit keyboard let's fill these keys here yeah those feel really nice that that feels nicer than most Acer keyboards uh, like that was one thing I knocked the 513 for kind of had a cheaper feeling keyframe this one feels great and there's not a ton of give there's a little bit of give right up there up at the top but not tons of give to this upper chassis. This is a plastic kind of whatever it is that Acer uses kind of for their keyboard deck. So you've got aluminum on the bottom, aluminum on the top, but then you've got the, the plastic type uh, polycarbonate chassis up top uh, where the keyboard sits, but it doesn't feel like it's hindering the keyboard at all. Nice smooth glass trackpad, nice click. I will say that this one, I guess because you've got the speaker grill up top, um, and then you know your standard full-size keyboard you're getting a little bit smaller trackpad now Is it too small to work with or anything? Absolutely not. It's it looks fine uh, I don't think there's gonna be any problem with that But we've kind of gotten used to these like massive huge trackpads and, and this one is just not that but uh, it's all glass It's very smooth And it has an excellent click mechanism Acer has been doing a great job of doing of, of putting in really solid trackpads in their devices uh, over the last few years. So almost any time I open up an Acer Chromebook, I'm not really concerned. But I'm going to get logged into this thing really quickly and we'll run just a couple tests and uh, get out of here. Okay, so now that I'm logged in, there are a couple things I do need to point out that I honestly, again, forgot about. I forgot about it when we did the hands-on. I forgot about it when we talked about it in a podcast both times, I think. Um, but it's because it's so well put into this chassis. This has a, a stowable recharging USI pin built in. So it's right up under the edge here. Um, and I, again, I just forget it's there. It's just so, uh, so well built into the side here that you just don't even notice it. But I saw it on the little sticker right here on the top. So uh, uh, I guess it's just one of those things I'm gonna forget all the time. But we were going to get a USI pin just so I could show everybody it's USI. And I'm like, oh wait, it's, it has a pin built in. It's got a couple of spots there uh, that allow for you to uh, keep it charged while it is docked. Um, so it is uh, obviously an active pin. And uh, just to show you that it's, it is functioning and working, we'll click on this. And it's got a nice like soft nub on the end of it. I really like that. Um, I, th I think I remember uh, when we did our hands-on with this, uh, really liking this pen. Yeah, just like the feel of it on the screen is really nice. It's got a, a nice, like, almost grips the screen just a little bit. So, uh, again, we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, when we do the review part of it. But it is a nice addition. Again, at that kind of price point, you're getting that stuff built in. That's, that's excellent. We also didn't talk about the screen specifically. I did say it was a little bit different take. So it's a 14 inch 16 by 10 screen. So it's still full HD plus. So instead of 1920 by 1080, it's 1920 by 1200. And that gives you that 16 by 10 ratio. It's super bright. We had to turn it down quite a bit to not blow out the shot here. Uh, very colorful, clearly has awesome viewing angles. I can see it 
fit perfectly from over here. And that slight bit of extra height here, while it doesn't give you the full height uh, feel of a three by two screen, that, that 16 by 10 is great, especially in a 14 inch form factor. And it feels a little, le a little less awkward than uh, the three by two does for some people. Some people just don't don't know how to deal with that taller screen and this one doesn't feel quite as tall so you kind of get the best of both worlds it's kind of a taller screen but also still feels like a wide screen uh, and so videos and stuff like that will have less letterboxing up at the top and speaking of videos let me play a little bit of audio out of these upward firing speakers here and see what this sounds like arrived with this update so we want to talk about those very loud and there's one that's a coming soon type of feature that we can show you how to spoken turn sounds we'll great talk about as well let's get into it here's the music Ooh. but before we get into that this video and you've heard me say this a hundred times i think at this point they're not like Pixelbook Go speakers. Um, I'm still waiting for the Chromebook that shows up and I'm like, oh my God, we gotta get the Pixelbook Go out and try and see if it you know, matches. Uh, it's not that, but it sounds really good. Like those are really good sounding speakers. Something that if you were to watch a little bit of YouTube content or maybe a 30 minute show or something like that, you wouldn't feel like you've missed uh, a whole bunch of the content just because of the sound. Uh, so big thumbs up there. Keyboard feels great. As you can see, it's backlit. So uh, we can kind of use the, the alt keys to get about six stages of backlighting there. Uh, not a whole lot of bleed. I can barely see it. You know, it bleeds a little bit, but not much uh, on the edges. And so, I mean, overall, this thing just is impressive. This is an impressive Chromebook. Uh, and this, this thing feels like uh, Acer really looking at their formula for Chromebooks and thinking through all the different things they need to in order to just keep making an iter iteratively better Chromebook uh, over and over. And so, uh, I do want to look at the camera because Acer is doing another thing they call temporal noise reduction on their front facing cameras. And I think, let me look at the resolution here. Doop, doop, doop. So yeah, so full resolution, it looks like it's a 1080p cam. And with the, the, the temporal noise reduction stuff, it should help with lighting basically. It helps with, with difficult lighting scenarios. Um, and I'm going to point this over at Joe real quick. And again, the back side of the studio is really poorly lit, uh, obviously. And let me shade it at least a little bit, give it help. We've got a huge light up here. Um, yeah, and you can see it's bringing up those shadows really nicely. Like even in my eye, it's not that bright over there. Um, so, you know, we'll test this stuff for, for the actual review, obviously. And while I don't think this camera is going to probably hold up to what the HP um, uh, Dragonfly Chromebook does, that thing has a great webcam on it. It's nice to see companies start to think about the webcam and try to do some stuff to make video calls and those kind of things a little less painful on Chromebook. So if you get a decent camera here and you've got these great speakers, this thing's going to perform really well in that department for sure. Again, we're dealing with a Core i5 12th gen processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 of NVMe storage in here. So I have no doubt this thing's going to be nice and fast. Uh, we're starting to see Steam games roll out on 12th gen Chromebooks for testing. Uh, so it'll be cool to try out some of that kind of stuff. But I just think in general, the performance of this thing is going to be absolutely amazing it's going to be super fast there's no concerns really there but you know seeing how often the fans spin up and seeing how portable this thing feels and seeing what the battery life actually is with this uh, very bright screen i'd say we don't have a measurement on it and i haven't measured it obviously but just gauging from other ones i'd say it's 350 to 400 nits uh, it's very colorful so it looks great as well so it's going to be tempting to turn that screen up a little bit and, and kind of take advantage of that stuff so it'll be interesting to see what kind of battery life we're getting uh, out of these 12th gen chromebooks because uh, now we've got arm chromebooks that get crazy battery life so that's uh, way more important to think about uh, as we move forward with these but we got a lot of reviewing to do on this device again i, I think this is one that's that's going to find itself kind of going toe to toe with uh, things like the hp dragonfly and for this kind of price, you're getting a lot of stuff in here. You're getting a backlit keyboard, glass trackpad, great screen, uh, privacy shade, a nice resolution on the screen. So 16 by 10, 14 inches, you're getting a glass, I think I said glass trackpad already. You're getting the built-in stylus. You're getting upward firing, really good speakers, great internals, lots of ports. I mean, it's getting to the point where like, if they put a fingerprint scanner on here, this thing, from a, a feature standpoint, almost goes toe to toe with something that costs literally twice its uh, uh, its cost. So um, it's impressive. I like what Acer's done here. And again, like I said, we've got a lot of reviewing to do on this one. We got a lot more to think about and talk about with it. Uh, but for now, that's it for this one. If you did like this video, uh, give us a thumbs up. Go down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.